It's time to hit the jackpot because you're listening to How to Bet, hosted by Daryl Fine and Sean Miller, breaking down betting into four categories to help you stay ahead of the game, sharing their thoughts, opinions, and analysis on how to bet it, where to bet it, and who to bet on. Now here are your hosts, Daryl Fine and Sean Miller. Hello, everyone, and welcome to How to Bet on howtobet.com, where we will tell you how to bet where to bet it and who to bet on. I'm Daryl Fine along with Sean the Genius Miller. And uh, Sean, uh, we had an okay week this week, uh, this past week. We did not hit our parlays. Uh, You did better in the power in the uh, five top bets of the week. Uh, We both went seven and four in the remainder of the NFL game. So not terrible, but uh, we're going to do better this week. And, uh, you know, sometimes you just have to move on and, and, and get better the next week. All in all, this season, we've been really good. Yep. Let me mention that. Also, let me mention that you're watching us on YouTube at howtobet.com. Hit that subscribe button. You go to YouTube, hit the subscribe button, like us, uh, go into the uh, comment line, ask for merch. We will get you out that merch. Uh, we've uh, we've been giving out a lot of it, so let's keep on going. We have great hats, shirts, uh, water bottles. Swag. Swag. A lot of swag. So uh, hit us up there and ask for merch, and uh, and you'll get it. Uh, we'll go over, as a matter of fact, we, we have, we'll go over the uh, merch winners for the week uh, a little later on in the show. And uh, uh, in a few minutes, we have a special guest, Michael Jenkins, from the Daily Tip coming on. Uh, and he is a terrific guest, so stay tuned for that. And he has uh, great insights, uh, and I'm sure he will, as always, here on How to Bet at HowToBet.com. Yeah, and definitely. And make sure you follow our Twitter accounts as well, at the Prodigal Sean at FineLine33. Um, and uh, you can you can ask us for plays. You can ask us to maybe you know ask for some questions. If you got any questions uh, for our mailbag section, uh, send them over, and we'll try to answer them as much as possible. Yeah, and get into hello at how to bet. Uh, dot com I, for uh, your for, for your for our, your e- email e- uh, mailbag questions. Just, mailbag. Just want to say a little bit about last week when we were talking about that Bills game minus twenty, betting it up, right? Yes. And the and the, and the um the uh, points bet. Yeah, we were like <sighs> seven. It's all seventeen. Man, so this you isn't imagine a game if you bet that your points bet thing on that, you would have won thirty five thousand dollars. Thirty five thousand dollars is unbelievable. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, yeah. So, and, but we were saying this: the line's so high. So explain that. So explain that to the people on that points bet, because you have to take the set right off the bat. You're taking 17 points. Yeah. So, no. It, t- to be honest, on points bet, when when the if you're taking the points bet, it, it they push it up a little bit. Okay. So, so it's probably but, but closer to 19. But, okay. So whatever it so, is, though, you have to account for the points for yeah. the line first, yep. and then you're going to win the money. Yeah, uh, though you're going to win over whatever that point spread is to the difference of the score in the game. Am I explaining that correctly? Yeah, you're going to. It's basically let's let's go off a hundred dollars. So if you bet a hundred dollars on the Bills and the line was minus nineteen, because the point the points bet line is a little bit higher usually. So if they would have won by twenty five, you would have won. If it was nineteen, would have won six times your bet. So you won six hundred. Since they won by forty. You won mm. th- the max you could win is twenty times, mm-hmm. so you would have won twenty times your bet. So a hundred dollar bet would have won you two thousand plus your hundred, so twenty one hundred back. Cha ching, cha ching, take That's it to un- the it, bank. But once again, if you took Jacksonville, or I'm sorry, if you took if you lost. took Tennessee yeah. in that game yep. and they lost, the way, yep. now Jets. all of a sudden you're losing ten times your bet. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So be careful. But that would have been uh, quite the reward if you had the Buffalo. Bills. And now let's welcome our special guest, Michael Jenkins. Michael Jenkins, the host of the Daily Tip, presented by BetMGM, nine-time Emmy Award winner. Uh, Sean, we're stepping up in class here. We have an Emmy Award winner <laughs> on our show here on How to Bet. And Michael, thanks for coming aboard. Uh, we really appreciate having you. Well, you guys are very kind. Great to be with you. Uh, and Michael, the, uh, the we we really generate uh, most of our our talk around NFL, but uh, we, there's a big game in the Big Ten, so we want to mm-hmm. talk a little bit about Penn State at Iowa and Iowa City this week. How do you see this one going? A huge Big Ten matchup. 
I think if I had to take a side, I would probably lay with Iowa at home. Right now, it's it's below that key number of three, so it's the Hawkeyes minus two and a half. But I think the better play might be the under with the total set at 41 and a half. Both of these defenses are really good, and in particular, what Iowa did to Maryland. And I know on paper you say, oh, the Hawkeyes beat the Terps, no big deal. But Talia Tungavailoa is a pretty good quarterback, and the Terps have put up some big numbers this season. Iowa completely shut them down. And remember, that was about a three, three-and-a-half point spread, depending on where you got it, and Iowa just was lights out on defense. They scored at will. So I'm leaning towards the Hawkeyes, and I'm not I'm not one of those guys that, that relies on one game to gather all of my information. But defensively, we should see sort of two great defenses go at it, and I think that keeps this game below the number. Hey, Michael, uh, I think before the week started, the Tennessee-Jacksonville game wasn't maybe the, the headline event, but uh, all these events off the field and, and uh, the dumpster fire that's Jacksonville right now, maybe yeah. a lot of eyes on this game. I mean, w- you know, what do you think about this one? Well, what's interesting is that that line opened at Tennessee laying seven, seven and a half on Saturday. That was the early line. So once Tennessee lost to the Jets, then all of a sudden that number drops. So now you can get it around four. And make sure to keep an eye on whether or not Julio Jones returns, whether or not A.J. Brown returns. That really hamstrung Ryan Tannehill and that offense last week. But right now, this Urban Meyer dumpster fire, there's reports now that he's meeting with management. I don't know if he's going to last through the week. Even if he does, having a coach like that on a bad team who is trying to tell everyone about how to keep playing hard, how to play together, and he himself can't set an example. I just don't know how you don't lay the points with the Titans. And I'll guarantee you, if Brown and or Jones return to practice and it looks like they're going to play, you'll see the money come back in on Tennessee. I know Vegas is always right, but four seems like a pretty short number. So what do you say, Michael, to those people that say, well, why is it just four, four and a half? They're trying to suck you in. Vegas is trying to suck you, and they do it all the time. Well, that's true, and that's why I wanted to mention that line movement because it was seven, right? So you have to ask yourself that question, which you guys know. At what point does a line move so much where there's value on the other side now? And I think if you – it's easy to look at the last week and say, hey, you know, the Jags played the Bengals tough. Look at the Titans. They're coming off a loss to the Jets, and that's a dangerous game to play. You have to take a step back and realize Tennessee is a much better team, and Maybe Jacksonville comes out and they fight for Urban Meyer, but I doubt it. If that line hadn't dropped so significantly, if it's seven, seven and a half, then I say maybe that's a no play. But at four, I think it might be the right side. Uh, you know, you're down in Washington. Uh, your thoughts on this New Orleans uh, Washington game? I mean, both teams are two and two, and one team has a chance to get the three and two in the NFC, yeah. which might be pretty big uh, coming the end of the season. I mean, uh, what do you think about that game? God, I don't know. This is tough. I I may just stay away from this game just because these two teams, you don't know what you're going to get. And I know that's an easy thing to say when you're talking about two middle-of-the-road teams. But if you look at Washington, their strength this season was supposed to be their defense. That was a top-five defense last year. It's been a bottom-five defense for most of this season. I don't know what's going on with Washington. And it took, by the way, it took some a lot of luck for Terry McLaurin to catch that crazy pass from Taylor Heineke in the back of the end zone. So good for Washington for getting it done last weekend, but they were really lucky to win that game. And then conversely, you have a Saints team, and the strength was supposed to be Jameis Winston, you know, coming alive and really coming into his zone under Sean Payton. He's been inconsistent. So, you know, will the Washington defense show up? I don't know. Will, will Jameis Winston come alive and throw five touchdown passes or five interceptions? I don't know. There's so many... Just so many unknowns in a matchup like that is probably going to be a stay away for me because I just cannot get a bead on either of these teams. You know, it's funny the uh, as you said the Washington football team. I, I every week I come and say the biggest fraud so far in in the NFL is their defense. It was supposed to yeah. be so good, and on that flip side, Jameis Winston, who was you know get it and chuck it, uh, is now kind of a short passing game. Uh, you know, uh, throws for 200 yards and five touchdowns on on some given weeks, and so his uh, whole game has changed as far as uh, you know his his uh, you know the 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 past in the yeah. NFL to now. So it's uh, it's a little uh, shake up there for him to get used to as well. Yeah, that's an interesting point in that it sort of takes away his strength, right? And and certainly when you have a guy like Sean Payton, who is known as a guy who is very innovative on offense, and of course he's had Drew Brees and works in Taysom Hill when he can, 
But I think you're taking away one of Jameis's strength, which is throwing the ball down the field. He has a great arm. The issue is sometimes he's not accurate. Sometimes he is. But it's funny how during the preseason we saw Jameis play and, you know, we're all dying for football. We'll take any sort of football we can get. So we hear, you know, Jameis, this could be his year. Look great in the preseason. And now he's just essentially the same quarterback he was in Tampa, except he doesn't get to show off his arm. And I think it's hamstrung him a little bit. Uh, Michael, talking about uh, preseason and uh, some of my, I, I think my biggest uh, play before the preseason was uh, I was real big on Arizona yeah, and he, Kyler yeah. Murray uh, and, and, early. And he didn't take him last week. I yeah, had yeah, yeah, Arizona. Well, he took the Rams. You know, I, I think Arizona, you know, Kyler Murray was plus 1,100 on the MVP. Now he's the favorite at plus 550. Arizona's uh, 4-0 and rolling right now. I mean, uh, playing San Francisco team, it's a little bit banged up and you don't know who's going to be a quarterback. I mean, what can you say about the Cardinals and maybe this game? I love the Cardinals here. I love it. Now that line has moved up a tick. I believe it was Cardinals minus four and a half. Now it's Cardinals minus five and a half. But it looks like the Niners are going to go with Trey Lance, at least for this weekend. And this Cardinals defense has been much better than we anticipated. Chandler Jones is back. Everyone focuses on J.J. Watt, and I get that. But you take a defense that is much improved, and Kyler Murray is your favorite to win the MVP. I believe he's plus 550, six to one in a lot of spots. They added another weapon in Rondale Moore, who I loved it produce. So now he's got Christian Kirk. He's got DeAndre Hopkins. He's got Rondale Moore. He's got A.J. Green if he wants him. They just keep surrounding him with weapons. And then, oh, by the way, he can take off and burn you on the ground because he's he's so diminutive and so hard to catch and so great running with the football. Arizona has surprised me. I have to admit, I was not bullish on Arizona coming into the season. I thought they were overrated. I was way wrong about that. And San Francisco is banged up, and Trey Lance will show flashes, but – I would not trust a rookie quarterback going up against the Cardinals on the road, so I would lay it with Arizona. Yeah, I agree with you there. And, uh, you know, we, we talk about some of these teams that we thought were going to be good. Now, it's only week five, but, you know, yeah. it's, it's a chunk of the season. Hard to believe it's already week five. But it is, uh, you know, the first chunk of the season. Let's separate some of those pretenders uh, from the contenders. One, I believe, is the Tennessee Titans because I thought that they would really yeah. have a, a pretty good season this year. I did too. I'm surprised. They have all the tools, right? The one thing they didn't do, and, and this is really coming back to bite them, is that they did a great job of addressing the offense and bringing in Julio Jones, and they brought in a couple guys at linebacker on the defensive line, but that yeah. secondary can really be taken advantage of, and that was a problem last year for them too. They really didn't address that in the right way, and that's surprising to me because we're talking about Mike Vrabel, who, of course, is a former linebacker. He's a defensive guy, and so that's a place where you can take advantage of Tennessee, and I'm surprised like you are. I thought they would be one of the better teams in the NFL. They're not a fraud, but they're not as good as I thought they would be. How about the New England Patriots? Because now the New England Patriots, they spent a lot of money. They go get yeah. uh, John o. Smith. They get Henry. They get improve their defense. Uh, we saw a competitive team on Monday uh, on uh, Sunday night, excuse me. But uh, all in all, this is not a real good New England Patriots team. I agree a thousand percent. And someone was saying, oh, they played the Bucs tough. They played the Bucs tough. Yeah, they did, but they still lost the game. And that was a weird circumstance with the whole Belichick versus Brady. Yeah. There was a lot going on on both sides. It was also raining, so that affected the play. They still lost the game. Yes. Close doesn't count in the NFL. And had they been playing good football and played the Bucs close, okay, I'll listen to that argument. But overall, the Patriots are just a bad football team, and I don't think playing Tampa close in an odd game because of the circumstances – and Brady visiting Foxborough changes that. What about the Carolina Panthers? I like them. See, I love their coach. I do, too. I do, too. I like Carolina a lot, and I wouldn't toss them aside just because they made some mistakes and ran into a Dallas team that's a lot better than I thought yes, was going to be. Carolina is still a very good team, and they get the most out of their talent. I think Sam Darnold was a little overwhelmed in Dallas, but he's had a very good season. I think Matt Rule does a great job, and, and Joe Brady has done a really good job on offense of – creating opportunities and not forcing Darnold to do too much. And by the way, this is a top five defense as well. So they lost J.C. Horn for this season. That was a huge loss because I loved him coming out of South Carolina. Christian McCaffrey wasn't playing. Don't write off Carolina because they're one of those teams that are really well coached. They get the most out of their talent. They're going to be a tough out. I, I agree with you. I've agreed with you with everything you've said so far. So let's take two teams that were in the Super Bowl last year. And just from the first five weeks, uh, Michael, I can't see either one of these teams getting back to the Super Bowl 
because of the defense. They cannot defend, especially in the passing game. Yeah, I tend to agree with you. I, I think the best team in the AFC is Buffalo. I do too. And they're, ca- they're catching points at Arrowhead, and I think Buffalo might win that game straight up. We look at the Chiefs, and we're so accustomed to them dominating. But I believe now they're 2-16-1, and one, I think, in their last 19 games against the number. They don't cover. We were so accustomed to Patrick Mahomes lighting it up. But that defense is a sieve. And same thing for Tampa Bay. Their secondary is weak. They're not quite the team they were last year. And, yeah, I guess you can make the argument that Brady or Mahomes can outscore you. But that's a pretty dangerous play to make if you're talking about winning the Super Bowl. So they might get back, but I'm with you. They've got to improve on defense. And and at this point in the season, I'm not quite sure how either of those teams do that unless they pull off some sort of trade. Michael, so where can the folks out there hear Michael Jenkins? Because you are worth the listen for sure. Uh, So uh, let everybody know how and when we can hear you. And, uh, again, a, a great job here today. We appreciate that. I appreciate that. You can just download the Odyssey app, and we're also on Twitch at twitch.com slash betql. So we stream online. You can also listen to us on the Odyssey app, and we're 6 to 9 a.m. Eastern time across the country, Monday through Friday. Beautiful. Thank you, Michael. We really appreciate you coming on. We'll look forward again later in the season, Uh, and uh, good luck to you. Good luck with your picks. I hope you win because I I agree with uh, everything you said. (laughs) <laughs> Let's make some money, my friend. Yeah, Appreciate man. it. All Thanks, right, Michael. Thank you. Michael Jenkins for the Daily Tip, the host of the Daily Tip presented by BetMGM. We thank him for coming aboard. When we come back, our Parlay Power Plays of the Week right after this. Welcome back to How to Bet, hosted by Daryl Fine and Sean Miller, giving their thoughts, opinions, and analysis on how to bet, where to bet, and who to bet on. Hello, everyone, and welcome to How to Bet. Go to howtobet.com. We're going to show you how to bet, where to bet it, and who to bet on. I'm Daryl Fine, along with Sean the Genius Miller. And, uh, hey, week five in the NFL, it is time for our Parlay Power Plays of the week. Uh, Sean, uh, we did not do well last week. We've done well to this point, but last week we kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, pooped a little bit there. Yeah, parlays are tough. I mean, it's, it's you know, if you, if, if you win one out of every three, you bet. You, you win some money, yep. but, uh, you know, it's... Yeah. But we've done well to this point, so we will once again bring you our Parlay Power Plays of the Week. Uh, and again, you are watching us on YouTube. Remember to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, ask us in the comment line for merch. I want merch and you're going to get some merch. And, uh, speaking of which we've given out some angel. Oh, by the way, go to hello at how to bet.com for, and, and go back into their, our mailbox. We need, folks, we need your addresses. We need it. Don't give them to us on the air, obviously. But uh, we need your addresses. So go into that uh, email. Again, hello at howtobet.com. Uh, Angel O. Uh, Angel O. Ishmael Roll, I think his name is Jerome Walker. And then mm, 626 Lunatic. We knew... We need, even you, 626 Lunatic, we need your email so we could send you out the swag. You need the swag. we got to have to get it to you. Jerome, we could probably walk it to you. Jerome, at this point, we but, know, uh, we happen yeah. to know Jerome. We do know Jerome. So, uh, again, our Parlay Power Plays of the Week. And, uh, Sean, you go first with your Parlay Power Plays of the Week. Again, watch the lines, folks. Uh, remember, uh, always bet with your head, not with your heart. Don't bet over your means. Uh, you know, some people do it for entertainment. Some people do it to make money, and you can do both. But bet within your means. If you do have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLERS. Very, a lot of services around the nation. Uh, 1-800-GAMBLERS is one of them if you have a gambling problem. Parlay Power Play of the Week, Sean. Uh, you go first. Now, the lines, uh, you know, we do this earlier in the week, so the yep. lines are – we're giving you the lines we have, but check the lines certainly before you place these bets if you do it later in the week. Yeah, the first game obviously is one where the lines went down, uh, and, and uh, Michael Jenkins talked a little bit about it yes. in the thing, but uh, I'm going to take Tennessee over Jacksonville. It was mine – it started the, – the look-ahead line was minus 7.5. Tennessee lost – uh, some injuries, and now it's min- It's actually down to minus four, minus four and a half when we made the play. Ma- Michael Jenkins actually 
thinks there's a possibility that Urban Meyer is out. I mean, that's it, that would it, be it, something. There's a there's a possibility that by the time this game is played, Urban Meyer is the he USC coach dancing with that dancing. With yeah, that. he might be the USC coach by the time this game is. Uh, <laughs> you know, maybe That'd maybe trying to get it's a it's a dumpster fire, like he said, and uh, it's a mess. Mess. Um, I Tennessee, I think you know missed. The two receivers, yes. Julio Jones. And we don't know week. that they'll be back. Uh, Jones has a better shot of getting back than A.J. Brown. Yeah, and I, I just uh, – Jacksonville's a disaster. I, I just don't know how you, you overcome stuff like that. Like, sometimes you can rally behind the coach, but I you know, I don't think they're going to do that. I don't, you know, I don't think – Urban Meyer's a college guy. Yeah, I think so. Uh, my second game, I'm going to take the Cowboys – uh, it's, the line was minus seven and a half. I'm going to bet it down. Obviously, minus seven over the Giants. Um, if you watch Dallas play the last few weeks, I, they're very talented. You know, Giants got their win. Uh, Daniel Jones played well, but, you know, this is a different game. I think Dallas is going to come out and roll the Giants. Um, that might be a game where you can maybe bet it up to 10. Maybe that, that might be the points bet game. I, you know, I have to look. And then the third game, it's interesting. Baltimore, big win over Denver, knocked Teddy Bridgewater out, uh, going home and, and playing the Colts. The Colts last week had a must-win game. They had to win that yes. game. They were 0-3. There was no – they couldn't start 0-4 with some of the games coming up. They got the win, but, you know, this is a tougher spot uh, going back to Baltimore. Yeah. Uh, I, I just – you know, I think the Ravens' defense is back to being a top – you know, defense, uh, Lamar Jackson over 300 yards passing for, I think, only the second time. And uh, this team is back to being dominant. I, I'm actually looking forward to seeing that at AFC North race because I think, uh, you know, those teams are pretty good. But I'm going to go with the Ravens in this spot. So Sean's parlay power play of the week, Tennessee minus the four and a half. Dallas uh, over the Giants, he's going to bet it down to seven. We also might uh, look into the – uh, points bet uh, bet by betting it to 10 and then Baltimore minus the seven against Indianapolis my parlay power play of the week I will begin with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who won a tight one in New England in a you know an odd circumstance uh, not just the Brady Belichick Brady's return but also the the weather played a part in it but I think Tampa comes back and dominates a weak offensive team in the Miami Dolphins. I will take Tampa Bay minus the nine and a half. I will then go to Las Vegas and take the Las Vegas Raiders minus five and a half. Uh, uh, the Raiders struggled against a good Chargers team on Monday night. I think they rebound here against a bad Chicago team. Bad in a lot of facets of the game. Uh, Chicago, uh, decent defensively. Not good offensively. I want to see Fields do it again against a team not named Detroit. I don't think he can. So I'm going to go uh, Raiders here minus the five and a half. And I will finish it off with a team that you love yet didn't take last week. Mm -hmm. I will take the Arizona Cardinals. Again, the line we have right now is three and a half, but keep an eye on it. Arizona Cardinals minus three and a half against San Francisco, a beat up San Francisco. I don't care if they're healthy. This Arizona team, you are correct. They are really playing well. So I will take Arizona. So my parlay power play of the week, Tampa minus the nine and a half at home against Miami, Vegas at home minus the five and a half over Chicago, and then Arizona minus the three and a half at home against San Francisco. I'm taking all home teams for the parlay power play of the week. You know, it's interesting, you know, in that NFC West that home field advantage, if you see the stats last week, both the away teams um, won, and uh, the home field advantage doesn't doesn't stack up as much as it does in these other divisions. It's really weird when you look back over the last few years. Uh, as it, it is, uh, well, things have changed in that conference because the quarterback play of Mary, and then you have Stafford, yeah. uh, of course, Wilson, uh, the, the one down quarterback there would be the situation in San Francisco, whether it's Garoppolo or uh, Trey Lance. So uh, I will ask you this because you picked the Rams to win the Super Bowl and or get to the Super Bowl at least, and they might. I'm not saying they won't just based off last game. You can't. Uh, but Stafford played well. He's been playing well. He's got some weapons. Their defense, like yeah. the football team, was supposed to be so great. 
it's not so great. Yeah, I, I would. I mean, obviously Arizona smoked them, so They're Arizona's a better chunks team. Of yardage. It's weird. All these teams coming in, the, the defenses you thought were going to be pretty good haven't been. Other than you know, I mean, one team's defense who's stepped up big time is the Browns. I mean, they just Browns defense played they very just, well. They're unbelievable. Yeah. They sm- I mean. Baker Mayfield's been atrocious. He was so bad, like yeah, fifteen of thirty three. But you know the defense is good. So good. some of these other defenses, but like Michael Jenkins was the Arizona defense is stepping up, and I, I <sighs> Buffalo Bills defense. Buffalo Bills two defense. shutouts. They, I, I, I Arizona is very good team. Like yeah. I, I mean, obviously I was on them before, but you know you, you, you see these things. I, I am now but, sold on them. Yeah, yeah I, I just think they're a lot better than than. I think they're better than even other people thought. I, I just think they're really good. Yeah, so uh, it's, uh, again, uh, a team to, to to reckon with. So, once again, our Parlay Power Plays of the Week. Sean, Tennessee minus 4.5 at Jacksonville. Uh, Dallas at home, minus 7. He's going to bet it down to 7. Baltimore, minus 7 at home against Indianapolis. My Parlay Power Plays of the Week, I'm taking Tampa at home, uh, minus 9.5 against Miami. Vegas at home, 5.5. Uh, favorite against Chicago, and then Arizona at home three and a half against San Francisco. I have a question for you. Yeah. Are you taking, you know, when you're looking at these games, you know, Tampa Bay over Miami, for for example, are you are you saying, are, is your bet because of you think Tampa Bay is good or just because you think Miami is bad? So I, I think the, the Tampa Bay weakness is their secondary. I don't think Miami has the quarterbacking to exploit it. So Mm -hmm. that's where I'm at on this. I I just think uh, Miami's not going to be able to exploit the weakness of Tampa like other teams can. So that's why I'm going with Tampa in that one. Do you think it's easier to pick games against teams that are bad? Yes. Yes. But then they they, they can bite you like the Jets did. Last week, I think you get, you know, every once in a while. But I think think it's easier to pick against bad teams than it is sometimes to pick – Good teams, because even good teams struggle sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, we're offering uh, merch to one lucky subscriber that writes in the comment line, I want merch. Again, go to YouTube, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and then go to that comment line and put down, I want merch. And don't forget about our special promo codes. Make sure to check back to howtobet.com regularly, updated and unique promo codes to get you started in your betting journey. Remember, bet with your head, not with your heart. You see uh, the genius uh, just fashion fashioning our our merch. So get there to howtobet.com. When we come back, our top five bets of week five. We'll do it all after this. You are watching, you are listening right here on How to Bet. Go to howtobet.com. Let's go. And we're back with How to Bet, hosted by Daryl Fine and Sean Miller. Hello, everyone, and welcome to How to Bet. Go to howtobet.com. This is where we show you how to bet. Where to bet it and who to bet on. I'm Daryl Fine along with Sean the Genius Miller. And Sean, it is time for our top five NFL bets for week five. This is where we've identified uh, games that will be most watched, most bet on in each time segment. We have the Thursday night game, the one o'clock game, all times Eastern, 1 p.m., 4 p.m., Sunday night and Monday night. And, uh, Sean, you had a better week than I did in this uh, top five bets uh, last week. And I think the craziest thing about this season is that it's already week five. I can't believe it. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's flying by. Flying, just flying. It's how time works. It's uh, how time it works. keeps rolling. That's why they call them the genius, folks. You can't get that anywhere else. That Particle little, physics. That little tidbit. All kinds of stuff like that. Columbia. Columbia. Proud alum of Columbia. So, Sean, uh, again, uh, we want to remind everybody that you are watching us on YouTube. You have to. Well, we want you to have to. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Go to the comment line. Ask for merch. I want merch, and we will get you merch. So hit the subscribe button. Go to uh, the comment line, as I said. Also, email us at hello at howtobet.com. Hello. Uh, we have merch. We have water bottles, T-shirts. Get that. T- beautifully, be- beautiful blue. I mean, you don't find that blue ever, anywhere. Just anywhere. It's beautiful blue. Uh, so, yes, now it is time for our five, top five bets for the NFL Week 5. 
Uh, game number one Thursday. And by the way, we are well aware that there's a game in London at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time. It's a bad game. So we left that one out. We don't want anybody to, to unnecessarily set their alarm and wake up for that one. But if you do, have fun with it. We've left that out in this segment. We'll get to the next segment in our uh, rest of the NFL uh, best. Best of the rest. Best of the rest NFL. We'll get to that one uh, in London. Cheerio. Uh, okay. Thursday night. We have the Los Angeles Rams at Seattle. The line that we have, again, This we, we, we do the show earlier in the week. The lines can change, will change uh, in a lot of these games. So before you bet it, make sure you, you, you take a look uh, at the line. The line we're giving you here is the Rams minus one and a half at Seattle. Sean, fire first. Yeah, I don't think it's going to change too much from that. I mean, this is a pretty even game, but, uh, you know, once again, the road teams in the NFC West do pretty well for some reason. Uh, just over the last few years, the road teams have f- fared pretty well. I'm going to take the Rams to bounce back. I know it's a quick week. You know, head over to howtobet.com to do to look at my Thursday night preview. It's a quick week, and they you don't have, have a lot of time to stew. You have the articles. Yeah, all the articles up for all the primetime games. You know, not a lot of time to stew on this loss. And I I just think the Rams are a better team, so I'm going to take the better team on on the short week. As I uh, look at this game, I just want to see if there was any changes. Uh, How about – well, first of all, let me let me tell you, I'm going to go the other way. I'm taking Seattle to win here uh, in an upset, a little upset, uh, plus one and a half. I'll go with the Seahawks to win back to back games here, uh, and uh, I, I just I'm not I'm not sold on the Rams because of what we spoke about earlier. Their defense is not uh, as as good as we thought it would be, at least not at this point. Yeah, uh, I I I don't I think it's going to be a high scoring game. I, this Fifty-four would be, and a half is yeah, the total. I, this I would I would this you, is one of the overs. I, I over? think you're going to have to jump on this over here. Okay, so over uh, the total as well, fifty-four and a half. Let's go to Sunday at one p.m. The Green Bay Packers at Cincinnati. Green Bay minus four in this one. And uh, as you know, last week I had Jacksonville on Thursday night because Cincinnati is. Much as they've improved, they're not ready to give a team more than a touchdown. That's why I took Jacksonville in this one. They're not, in my opinion, ready to uh, uh, beat the Green Bay Packers or stay with even within a touchdown here. Green Bay on a roll right now. Yeah, and I think you know Green Bay, much like Buffalo in that first week, a uh, little bit of a bad performance for for. I mean, well, there's a lot of a bad performance for Green Bay. But uh, they're starting to figure it out, and I think uh, this team is going to start to go on a roll here. Uh, I, th- I think you know, I don't think the Bengals are ready for this. No, I don't either. So uh, that's the one o'clock game. Four o'clock Sunday. Most eyes will be on the Dallas Cowboys and New York Giants at Dallas, New York. A come from behind win for their first win. Dallas, a seven and a half point favor. We already know who you like because uh, you put them as part of your of your parlay power play of the week. You like the Dallas Cowboys. You're going to bet it down to seven. I happen to like the New York Football Giants in this one. I like the hook. I'm going to take the seven and a half. And the Giants, they played pretty well last week. I think this is going to be a tighter game than people think. I'm not saying the Giants will win, but I will take the Giants in this one. Then the Sunday night game, a real good one. Buffalo at Kansas City and Buffalo, a two and a half point dog in this one. I happen to think Buffalo is the best team in football. uh, So I will take Buffalo plus the two and a half. You know, I'm going to hope this line goes up to, to three, maybe three Do you think it'll half. go up before it goes down? I don't know. I think it's probably going to stay where it is. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm on Buffalo money line right now. I, I just, I mean, I'll take the points if you're going to give me two and a half points. But the money line for that game, um, I'm going to take Buffalo. Let's see what the money line is right now. Currently about one plus one twenty plus one twenty five. I, I I'm all over the money line. Bills. I think they went out right. So and and the total in this game a high fifty six and a half. You think this is is the shootout? Now Buffalo has already shut out two teams. I'm not yeah, saying by any means they're going to shut out a Kansas lot of City. Points. But that's a lot of points for a team that's playing very well. Defend the best defensive 20. team in football right now. 
I, I think I picked, uh, you know, once again, go to see my uh, picks on, on how to bet. How to bet. I, I think com. I picked pick the over i think i maybe 30 35 38 35 31 38 31 mm-hmm. something like that well, it's over yeah i just but i think buffalo i think you're better off taking the buffalo team total over than you will be taking maybe the over in the whole game so explain that a little bit the buffalo team total not a lot of people bet that way but it no. is an option when betting yeah you can go on most of these books uh you know, early in the week, there's not as many options, but as the the games get closer, you can find you know all the different prop bets. Uh, if you can bet first quarter, first half, whatever it is, but you can bet the totals for both teams. Uh, this one's probably going to be around 31, I would guess. Um, and, and you can take the Bills, and it's going to be the same thing. It's just like taking the over for a game, but your just your the total Bills. for the game. It's just for the Bills, which is an interesting bet. Probably, yeah. it's probably. I'm not going to say it's easy. It's probably easier, though, to win those bets than than the, the actual over-under in the game. Yeah, I just especially if you're betting like a good team. Like last week, if you would have bet the total in the in the um, the Buffalo-Houston game, you would have lost. But, yes. I mean, the Houston total, you would the Well, the Houston well, you can under. Bet under. Yeah, the Houston under, you yeah. would have won. But uh, the, the Bills total, you would have won. Because you can't count on, you know, some of these teams to score points, especially in these bad games. So you're better off taking a better team and their total points. Finally, the Monday night game, the Baltimore Ravens at home, a seven-point favorite over Indianapolis, who got their first win of the season. Uh, can Carson Wentz come in and keep it close, or even upset the Baltimore Ravens? No, no I, you know, I once again I took him in the parlay. I just think Baltimore is is very good. I think their defense is going to be key in this game. I just don't see Indianapolis doing much. I think they're going to kind of bottle up Jonathan Taylor. Yeah, I think that will be the goal for them to bottle up Taylor, make Wentz beat them. I don't think he can. I will also take the Ravens in this one. So uh, as usual, we disagree on two games. It seems to be that way every week in our top five bets of the week. We differ on two games. Uh, so that keeps it interesting. Do you have some kind of a uh, you know, a, a, like plus money play this week? Uh, I, I know Buffalo probably. Right? Yeah, I, I, I do like uh, Buffalo in, in a plus money play here this week. I do. I, I just think they go in and beat Kansas City. I'm not, again, I'm certainly not excited about Kansas City being a Super Bowl team because of their defense. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think Buffalo is probably the best play here. I think there's another game maybe you could target. We'll, we'll look at that in, in the fourth segment. I, I think, obviously, Cleveland and, and the Chargers game. Remember to hit that subscribe button when watching us on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. We appreciate that. We appreciate you watching us, too, on YouTube. I know there's a trillion choices, uh, so we appreciate that. When we come back, the best of the rest in the NFL. Back after this, go to howtobet.com. Go get it. Let's take it back to How to Bet, hosted by gambling masterminds Daryl Fine and Sean Miller. Hello, everyone, and welcome to How to Bet. Go to howtobet.com. We show you how to bet, where to bet it, and who to bet on. I'm Daryl Fine, along with Sean the Genius Miller. Uh, We're going to bring you now the best of the rest in the NFL. Remember to go on YouTube and hit that subscribe button. If you're watching us, you're watching us on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Go to the comments section and ask for merch. I want merch. We've given out merch. We'll give out more. And we have some uh, We have some outstanding merch. Look at the coloring. Look at the bright blue. How to bet. Dot com. Taking over the whole screen. Matches so my we eyes. Do. We have great merch. So uh, make sure you uh, ask for merch. Go back regularly to howtobet.com. Uh, we have updated odds. We have uh, unique promo codes for uh, different uh, sports books. And speaking of different sports books, you'll see when you go to howtobet.com, various different sports books with different lines. And why is this good to have as a better genius? Well, you know, you need to line shop. Um, Shopping you know, for lines. Yeah, if, if you're if you're betting, you know, a lot of games or if you're betting every week, uh, you know, you need to probably have more than one sports book. It's good to have more than one sports book because, you know, you'll see up on the screen here, you got, you know, Unibet, BetMGM, Bet365, 
Caesars, 888, Typico, Betway. So, you know, as you see some of these games, I mean, a lot of them are the same. It's early in the week, so they're going to be the same. But as it gets closer to the game, you might be able to get a little bit more value. Like, you know, maybe you get, you know, Tampa Bay, for example, is minus 10 with someone and minus 11 with another one here. You see minus 10, minus 10 and, 10 and a half. Opened up at nine and a half. You know, th those extra points, you know, if Tampa Bay wins by 10, you know, you're going to push and not lose your bet. Whereas if you bet it at 10 and a half, you're going to lose your bet if they win by 10. So, I mean, that adds up over the course of a season. It's the same thing with the, you know, the, the, um, the promo codes. You know, we talk about all the promo codes each week. And, uh, you know, you can win a lot of money there and the bet boost and stuff. But, yeah, line shopping is big as well. You know, have, you have to be able to bounce around and see where you're going to get the best go value. Shop. Go shop for lines. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you go to, you know, I don't know, you go to a grocery store. Yeah. If, if, you know, Whole Foods has this something for, for $6 and, you know, a Giant has it for $3, where are you going to buy it? I'm going to Giant. Yeah, exactly, mm. you know, so... Yeah. Free plug the giant free, free right there. Free plug the giant. Give me some, give me some swag, Whole, giant. Whole Foods not very happy right now, but giant. Give me some. Yeah, I, I can't right. bash Whole Foods too much. They gave me a five hundred dollar gift card Woo. one time. I was like their shopper of the week. Nice. Uh, yeah, we love. Hey, we love Whole Foods. We love Giant. We love them all. Yes, Mr. Bezos, please support our show. <laughs> Send right. me to space. Bests. I think you're already there. <laughs> Personally, I think you're already there. Hey, the best of the rest in the NFL. We have an early morning game. Get your tea and crumpets. Crumpets? Crumpets. Yeah. Crumpets. And they're playing at the Tottenham, at the Tottenham Stadium, you know, obviously as a, the, as a... Those England games are never any good. So but I'll tell you, that stadium is unbelievable. The, the, they will have a Super Bowl there at some point in the next five years. It I'm, is a fantastic stadium. I don't know about five stadium. years, but I believe that they will. I, I know yep. that they will try for sure. So Atlanta, minus three and a half against the Jets in England. The total on the game is 46. Uh, you go first. <sighs> Man, I Jets won last week, but Jets they won. still stink. Uh, you know, I know Atlanta. The Jets win. The Jets win. Atlanta is close to being two and two. They they were they were in that game last week. They played pretty well. I think Atlanta is the better team, and I, I just think they're closer to being you know a seven and ten team than the Jets. I'm going to take Atlanta. I don't love the hook, but both teams stink. Yeah. So I'm going to take the team that. Stinks less, in my opinion. I will go with Atlanta as well, minus the three and a half. Next up, uh, Tennessee and the Jags. We already know that you like Tennessee. It's part of your parlay power play of the week. Yep. I am going to surprise you and take the Jaguars plus the four and a half. I'm going to tell you why. Yeah, why? Everybody, Please. everybody's taking Tennessee. Wait, the I line go got bet somebody. down, though. It by, did, it, so it people did. must have been taking the Jags it, a little did. bit. They did. And then uh, when this whole thing went crazy with Urban Meyer and there's trouble in the ranks, I, I'm, I'm taking I'm taking Jacksonville. Uh, I had Jacksonville last week. They covered. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to take them again because everybody's taking Tennessee, and I will go against the public in this one. Next up. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, we have them early at nine and a half, minus nine and a half against Miami. I already told you I like Tampa in this one. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, it's already up to, you see, you know, was, as you saw on the lines there, it was up to 10, 10 and a half with some books. Uh, you know, you, you got to probably get it at some point soon here uh, before it goes up to 12 or 13, but I'm going to take Tampa Bay. You know, if it goes to 14 or 15, that's a different story. But right now, at, you know, minus 9.5, minus 10, I'll take Tampa Bay. Uh, next one up, also minus 9.5, the New England Patriots at Houston. Houston, just a complete mess. You know, it wasn't awful, awful with Tyrod Taylor, but now with Mills, they just can't generate any offense. For that reason, I am taking the New England Patriots. They had 109 yards of offense. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, and and in, in the preview story for this week, I looked it up. Uh, you, you know, in 1979, the Rams played the Seahawks, and the Rams held the Seahawks to minus seven yards wow. in the game. I because I, I you know I thought 109 what was, the was final? pretty low. Do you know the final? Yeah, it was like 37 nothing or mm. something like that. Mm. It was the guy. The Rams went to the Super Bowl that year, yeah. so they were pretty good. But uh, yeah, I you know you can make this. And this is this is this would be the points bet kind of look here. The, you know. the total on this game, by the way, is forty. 
Yeah, it's going to have to be New, York, New England scoring 40. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, that, you know, it's a rematch. You know, it's a kind of a little bit of a replay. I don't know if if New England can score that many points, but, you know, I, I just – New England wins this, well, 27-7, something like that. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm going under and New England on this one. Next up, the Carolina Panthers host the Philadelphia Eagles. Carolina, a four-point favorite. Uh, and, uh, Sean, the total 45 in this one, a – Pretty good defensive Carolina team, although they did get beat up pretty bad by Dallas. Yeah, I don't have much of a feel for the total, but uh, I do like Carolina in this game. You know, minus four. Um, you know, they're a better team. I don't think the Eagles are any good. I, uh, I agree. I think Carolina is pretty good, so you know, I, I'll go with it. And their defense is is yep. good, so I, I I'll go with Carolina. I am going to get with Carolina as well. You know, my affinity for Matt Rule. I just think he's been he's a terrific coach. Uh, Sam Darnold playing better. Sam Darnold had a pretty good game last week. He did throw a pick, but he he uh, he had a pretty good game. So it was Adam Gase the whole time. Stunned. Could be. I am stunned. Could be. Yeah. Truly shocking, yeah. as they say on Twitter. Sh- shouldn't be too shocking to anybody. Uh, next up, the Pittsburgh Steelers at home. This game opened up with Denver being. The Man. favorite it is now Pittsburgh minus one against Denver. Denver, uh, we had said that Bridgewater was the correct quarterback, uh, the selection, uh, but now there might be trouble with Bridgewater and his concussion. So uh, Pittsburgh minus one and a half, and you know I think Pittsburgh just absolutely stinks. Yeah, and I think, you know, I, I wrote this in the preview as well. The Denver's already had like nine starters miss time. I mean, they're just... Jerry, they're, Judy, who's big, big yeah, out. Yeah, you know, they started 3-0. But at some point, I mean, it'd be great if they could win this game. I have no confidence in Drew Locke to win a big game. Yeah, that's the but, problem. you know, the Steelers aren't any good either. So, I mean, I'm going to take the Steelers, but like, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I would not be touching this game, to be honest. I am also taking the Steelers. If I had to take it, I would take the Steelers, but I'm with Sean. I'm not touching this game. If Tiffany gave me her money, I don't know if I would be betting this wow. game. Wow, that's something. So we're, at, we're off that game. All right, next up, the Washington football team. Is a as plus one at home against New Orleans. And this New Orleans team is up and down. They crush Green Bay opening day, then they lose a cup, then they get beat uh, while having the lead fairly handily against the Giants. So, which Saints team shows up in DC? Who knows? Which which football team shows up in DC? That's true. Right? The defense uh, has been terrible for Washington. I just. <sighs> I think the defense is maybe it's an easier fix. I, I think I think at some point you know they're going to be you know turning around a little bit. Um, I, I like Washington in this game. I, I just think it's a, it's a pick 'em game. You know, pretty eh, much a pick 'em. You know, I, I just think Washington is one of these teams in the NFC that you know is going to be hanging around there, maybe nine and eight, maybe hanging around the playoff. Uh, you know, they're not. I don't think they're going to win the division at this point. Yeah, when they when they lost Heineke's playing okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's getting things done. But when they lost Fitzpatrick, that was pretty much their season. Uh, I'm going to go New Orleans, uh, and I'll take the uh, Saints at minus one. Uh, by the way, the total forty four and a half. Does that do anything for you? I have no idea, to yeah. be honest. I mean, okay. it's just I would probably take the over, but like you just, I mean, Washington's <laughs> offense played pretty well last week. Yeah, yeah, their offense hasn't been uh, a huge problem here. Next up, Minnesota at home, eight and a half point favorite over Detroit. I'll go first on this one because I can't wait to tell you because I've been on the Lions. I thought they were fun to watch. They're not. Uh, I, I will not take a uh, Jared Goff run team. A uh, Jared Goff led sure. team will get you broke, folks. So I'm going to take Minnesota minus eight and a half in this. Goff was a just a turnover waiting. It was a disgrace last week. They lost to the Bears. They should have won that game last week, and they didn't even cut. I mean, ter- terrible. He just he doesn't have it, folks. So I'm taking Minnesota. I'm going to take the Vikings as well. Um, you know, last week they really struggled uh, against the Browns, but the Browns' defense, once again, is, is so good. Um, but, yeah, lines aren't any good. Next on the slate, we'll go to Las Vegas. I've already told you this is part of my parlay power play of the week. I like the Raiders minus the 5.5 against Chicago. I want to see Fields do it against some team not named Detroit. Yeah, I'm going to take Vegas as well at home. Uh, minus five and a half. 
that's kind of the points. You know, if it starts getting up towards six, seven, you know, that, that might give me a little pause. But right now, Vegas, I'll take Vegas. This next game could be the best game of the week. Yeah. All right. Uh, it, it's in that four o'clock time slot, uh, but where most people just geographically will watch that uh, Giants uh, Dallas game. It's just the game that's always the most viewed. In this one, the Cleveland Browns are getting a point and a half at LA against the Chargers. As I said, this could be a good one. I'll go first here. I'll take the Chargers minus the point and a half. I was really impressed with. Uh, Herbert and the Chargers and their defense last week. Uh, Cleveland, def- they deed it up too against a you know, pretty good offensive team in Minnesota. So I'll take the Chargers minus the point and a half. Uh, how about you with Cleveland? By the way, the total is 49 and a half. Yeah, I mean, you know, one of these teams I've been on, obviously. Um, I, I just, this is a really tough game to call. Baker Mayfield was so bad last week but i i can't imagine he's going to be as bad as this again this so, week so you're taking the browns Am I yeah, yeah i'm gonna take now the how browns. about so the point, point I, and a half you're gonna go money yeah, line? yeah i'll take the money line i'll take them on the money line i mean the thing i think about you know miles garrett obviously has been phenomenal but uh this defense is getting to the point where it's getting hard to move the ball against them and hard to score points i mean they 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 slowed down the Chiefs opening week. I mean, you know, they, they lost the game. But uh, I, I just, this this team is really good. But this is by far the best game of the yeah, uh, should Sunday. Be. And of, of, the early, of the not. Yeah, like of the uh, of the, the 4 o'clock games, for sure. And now Arizona and San Francisco wrap it up. Uh, Arizona, I've already told you, they're part of my parlay power plays of the week. I like them at minus 3.5 against San Francisco. Oh, I love the Cardinals, yeah. man. I just, the you know, listen to Michael Jenkins talk, too, about Trey Lance. I, I just think, you know, it's a tough spot for Lance. This defense from Arizona is much improved. Um, you know, I'm going to go against the trend and pick the home team here. But, uh, you know, I'm going to go with, I'm going to ride the Cardinals until, you, you know, I, Till, till, such till time they is, fail. I yeah, got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. And now uh, let's give a, a teaser. I know that you we, we've talked before. You you like a, a, a teaser this week. A th- I believe a three team teaser. Let's tell folks about a teaser that you really uh, happen to to like. Yeah, basically, you know, you're going to take uh, three teams and you're going to get points. You can shift the points up or shift the points you're, down. You're getting so. six, correct? In this one. Yeah, All I'm right. going to get six, and I, I'm going to go with teams. Here's my philosophy. I don't want to pick a game like I don't want to pick Detroit and like bump it up to like 14 and a half because I, I don't want to pick teams I think are going to lose. Right. Like I hate picking right. teams They'll I think are going to lose. Yep. Yep. You, you, you got to go with teams you think are going to win. So I'm going to go with Tennessee. I'm going to take them at plus one and a half or plus two if you can get them at minus four. Uh, Tampa Bay, it's right now it's it's minus 10, so down to minus four. So basically, you just have to win by a touchdown. And New England over Houston once again. That's you know, thing. So right. bet it down to three. You know, gets down to three and a half. So game, basically, yeah. three teams that I already took to cover the points. Right. I'm gonna take them on a teaser Teasable. and get six points. So you know, if those games are a little bit closer than we think, you're still gonna win those. Yes. So that is your three team teaser. Uh, we are pretty much all out of time here. It uh, flies by when you're having fun. Remember to. Go to YouTube, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, go to the comment line, ask for merch, go to our email, hello at howtobet.com. And our Twitter, and our at Twitter. the prodigal Sean, at yeah. fineline33. Yeah. F-E-I-N-L-I-N-E 33, get there. Uh, we appreciate that. We know you have a trillion different options to watch and listen to podcasts. We appreciate you coming on ours. Remember, bet with your head, not with your heart. Don't go above your means if you have a gambling problem. There are There's help out there, including 1-800-GAMBLER. For our producer, Trey Wright, our executive director, Tiffany Hartman. He's Sean Miller. I'm Daryl Fine. We will see you next week. How to Bet. Go to howtobet.com. Get it. Thank you for listening to How to Bet, hosted by Daryl Fine and Sean Miller. For more information about betting guides, online gambling, betting odds, including NFL betting lines and odds, go to howtobet.com. Watch all How to Bet podcasts on YouTube. And to access all How to Bet podcasts, go to 1077thebronc.com slash howtobet.